let's talk about animals in the outdoors for a minute. Because frankly, seeing an animal in the wild is without a doubt a thrilling and rewarding experience. We've seen black bears, moose, elk, mountain goats, marmots, you name it while well, we've been hiking and backpacking and every time it's just as exciting as the last. But animal encounters and sightings can turn scary quickly if you're not careful. Not often, mind you, but it does happen, so it's important to be prepared and know how to respond when you do cross paths with something big and potentially dangerous in the wild. And I'm not just talking about bears. True, they often get a bad rap as the scariest thing in the woods, but they aren't the only animal that can cause bodily harm. In fact, more people are injured by moose every year than bears. True story. So caution and care should be taken no matter what sort of animal you're hoping to spot outside. Or hoping not to spot. So let's start with the basics that apply to every animal you may encounter outdoors. First of all, and I've mentioned this in a previous lesson, never feed a wild animal. Period. A fed animal is a dead animal. That's for several reasons, which I only touched on in the previous lesson. First, human food can make animals very, very sick, and that can directly cause illness or death. But the more likely and unhealthy scenario is that when many people over a long period of time offer animals food, say the chipmunks at Zion or elk at the Grand Canyon, the animals become acclimated to human presence and food, so they begin to seek it out. That can lead to increased human-animal encounters, many of which can turn dangerous, if not deadly, when animals don't get what they want, or get uncomfortable with how close people are to them and then attack. And when they do, that animal may have to be put down. Park service employees will often have to locate an animal that has become too acclimated to human presence and food and euthanize it because it's become a danger to the people who are visiting that area. And that's a real shame because we are visitors in their house and our actions shouldn't contribute to their death. When people feed wild animals, that can also disrupt their natural eating habits as well as their movements and wanderings, which means it has the very real potential to alter and shift their natural habitats, which may not have the food or shelter they require to live happy, healthy lives. So to recap, never feed a wild animal. Yes, even if it's adorable. Secondly, keep your distance from all wild animals. Yep, even the seemingly harmless ones. It's true that some animals have become so accustomed to human presence that they will walk right up to you without batting an eyelash. I've had quokkas in Australia sit directly on my lap. Chipmunks in Utah seek shade under my bent knees and deer walk straight toward me in campsites. This is an inevitable byproduct of heavily trafficked areas, unfortunately. Animals get used to us being there and therefore are no longer bothered by it. That said, you should always do your part to make room for animals even if they seem to be seeking you out and never ever be the one to do the approaching. Not sure what kind of distance you should keep? Use the rule of thumb, like your, your literal thumb. As in, stick out your thumb, extend your hand to arm's length, close one eye, and if your thumb doesn't cover the entirety of the animal in front of you, you're too close and you need to back it up. Again, I know sometimes this is unavoidable, like with squirrels, chipmunks, sometimes even deer, but when we're talking about animals like elk, buffalo, black bears, or other large creatures, you absolutely need to keep your distance. I mean, every year we hear about people getting tossed by bison in Yellowstone, moose charging people in Alaska, and black bears protecting their young in the Pacific Northwest. Even deer can be potentially dangerous. So yes, as an animal lover, I absolutely understand the desire to get up close and personal with cuddly wild creatures. I mean, yes, Bears are freaking adorable. Moose looks so derpy and harmless. Elk so regal and majestic. But remember that this isn't Yogi, Bullwinkle, or Bambi we're talking about here. These are wild creatures whose home we are in, who we are likely frightening with our presence, and who may feel the need to defend themselves or their families. So if you want to see animals up close, bring your zoom lens or binoculars and enjoy them from a distance. But let's talk about a few animals specifically, because Let's be honest, most people who are new to the outdoors aren't worried about deer, chipmunks, or even moose. They're likely worried about larger threats like bears, mountain lions, or feral hogs. They're scary, okay? 
Let's start with bears, everyone's favorite wild animal to fear. For starters, fear is almost entirely unnecessary. There are only four to six fatal bear attacks across the United States every year. You are much more likely to get in a car accident on the way to the trailhead than you are to be attacked by a bear. So while you don't need to be afraid, you should be prepared and aware. And what to do if you do see one depends on the type of bear. Black bears, for example, are fairly docile, curious, and skittish. If you see one, your first course of action should be to make a lot of noise in order to scare the bear away by making it think it's not welcome and you are not interesting, which is pretty hard for some of us. Because chances are it's just as curious as to what the deal is with this strange looking biped. If shouting, banging pants, and waving your arms doesn't seem to be doing the trick to scare it away, then you should back away slowly, still making as much noise as you can and making yourself seem as large and unappealing as possible. You can even throw rocks or sticks if necessary. If the black bear keeps coming at you and charges, fight back. Black bears are more likely to leave you alone if they don't think you're worth the trouble. So if you start fighting back, it's very likely they'll give up and go away. If you encounter a grizzly bear, on the other hand, your first hope should be that the animal hasn't seen you. If you don't think it has, back away slowly and silently until you are out of sight, then get the heck out of there. If it does see you, talk to the bear calmly, quietly, and in a soothing voice, saying things like, hey bear, it's okay bear, hi bear, etc. Don't try to make yourself look big, don't make noise or wave your hands in the air, because you want to look as non-threatening as possible. While you speak to the bear softly, back away slowly and never take your eyes off the grizzly bear. Try not to make eye contact. If you are able to back around a bend in the trail where the bear can no longer see you, hightail it out of there. If it starts coming toward you, on the other hand, keep up the calm, quiet voice and continue backing away, as long as it's approaching slowly in which case it's likely just curious and still deciding what to do with you. If, on the other hand, it charges, do not run and do not fight back. Fall to the ground, curl up into the fetal position, protect your head and neck as best you can, and play dead. Grizzlies, unlike black bears, are less curious and more concerned with neutralizing the immediate threat. So if a grizzly thinks that you're dead, it's more likely to leave you alone. So play dead, stay very still, make as little noise as possible, and don't get up to run away until the bear has disappeared from sight entirely. Whatever the type of bear, if you are attacked, make sure to seek medical attention immediately. And don't let a fear of bears keep you from enjoying the outdoors. As for how to tell the difference between black bears and grizzly bears, grizzly bears have a much smaller footprint in terms of where in the world they live. So that's an excellent starting point. They don't live in most of the lower 48, though there are a few states they call home, like Montana. And while black bears tend to be smaller and grizzly bears larger, black bears aren't always black and grizzly bears aren't always brown. To help you figure out the difference, if you do see one, we will link to an article comparing the two in the lesson text below. But like I said, encounters with either are extremely unlikely and bears are not evil, aggressive animals out to get humans. They're simply animals doing what animals do, protecting their home and reacting to strangers who don't belong and probably frighten them as much as they frighten you. A few more notes on bears in defense. Bear bells don't work, so don't waste your money. Talking, singing, or making noise as you hike works much better. Josh and I did this the entire time. We were backpacking in Alaska, Canada, and the Pacific Northwest and didn't see a black bear or grizzly once. We did see evidence that they had been nearby though, likely because they heard us coming and got the heck out of there. Also, carry bear spray, especially in grizzly country. Sometimes that's required. It works on other animals too, but it's an effective defense tool. Better than a gun. In fact, studies show that you are twice as likely to suffer an injury from a bear if you try to shoot it than if you use bear spray. So science. Next up, mountain lions. If you see a mountain lion on the trail, react in much the same way as you would with a black bear. 
turn toward it, make yourself look big by waving your hands or trekking poles in the air, make a lot of noise, yell, and make yourself look aggressive and totally not worth the fight. After all, mountain lions look for prey that's vulnerable and weak. They don't want to have to put in more of a fight for their next meal than they absolutely have to. So if you look like you're going to cause some trouble, chances are a mountain lion is going to leave you alone. But if you do spot one that seems to be keeping its eyes on you, keep your eyes on it. Especially if you've tried to scare it away and it isn't backing off. In that case, make your way back to a trailhead and tell a ranger or post a sign warning of a mountain lion in the area. They're sneaky. If a mountain lion does attack, just like with a black bear, fight like hell. Use rocks, sticks, your fists, feet, trekking poles, anything you have at your disposal to fight back against the mountain lion. And fight like your life depends on it, because it might. But take heart, because just like with bears, mountain lion attacks are extremely rare. In fact, if you even see a mountain lion in the wild, you should consider yourself pretty lucky. They don't show their faces willy-nilly. Not if it attacks you, that's definitely not lucky, but most people will never even see a mountain lion in their lifetime. As for other large animals in the wild, like boars, moose, elk, buffalo, bighorn sheep, etc., just like the animals above, they're usually not interested in charging as long as you keep your distance. So stay back at least 50 feet, at least 100 if it's a carnivore. And if you do find yourself too close, your best course of action is often to hide behind trees or boulders, anything that puts a barrier between you and the animal. Most of the time, once they lose sight of you, they'll call off the attack. Every animal is different, of course, so if you want to read more about specific animals you're likely to encounter, like wild hogs in Texas, I'll link to a few articles I've written on the subject below. Whatever you do, don't feed wild animals, keep your distance, and know how to protect yourself. Oh, and you know, bring your zoom lens and wander on. And enjoy the heck out of that. Make sure you get a picture, man, because pictures or it didn't happen. You know how many people don't believe that I saw a puma on the side of the road in Canada because I didn't have a photo of it? I did. True story. 100%. Nobody believes me because there's no photo. You know why there wasn't a photo? Because I was driving. Come on. I mean, for real. You know what I haven't seen in the wild yet that I would really like to? is a grizzly bear, preferably from like across a river. And, you know, maybe when I'm hiking in the middle of the day, not when I'm about to like set up camp. Uh, but I, I, I would really like to see a grizzly. That would be cool. Big fluffy guys, that's what they are. Cute little cuddly babies.